snaring snowshoe hare is almost like grocery shopping for me. That's five. Find out how I did it in this video. So Holden and I are out checking some snares. We've had them set for probably, what, three, four days now, eh, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, how many rabbits did we catch so far? Three. Three, yeah, and actually, we caught two of them in this trap behind us. Yeah, right here. So uh, that's been a really productive set for us. Uh, I've caught uh, hares here before, and I think what it makes it productive is that there's a, a run that comes up, but there's a cedar tree that's fallen down, and I think they run down the cedar tree, and then they ha find this little gap here, and then they scoot across the other cedar tree. But uh, I think I've caught all the ones in the area, so they're not doing that anymore, at least not today. But uh, we have probably a dozen set out, so we got a couple more to check. Yeah. yeah? What do you think? We're doing pretty good, huh? Yeah. Is it cold today? Not really. No? You know, you're used to the cold now. It's about yeah. minus 10 Celsius. It's colder than it has been uh, lately. We're almost to the spring, almost in spring now. But uh, yeah, it's beautiful out here. Nice, cool weather, but not super cold. It's the perfect time to get out and snare. So the plan is. Uh, we're gonna make a home cooked meal. I think this time I'm gonna try to do my best to make the hair uh, Fall off the bone tender. So maybe we'll use like a pressure cooker or something like that and give it a go Yeah, we use up like a brine solution and yeah. yeah, how about we brine it all up and then we'll fry it and then put it in the pressure cooker and slow cook it Or maybe put it in the oven and slow cook it Good uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's go Another snare. Nothing in it though. No all right, come back out. We'll check the next one. So, buddy, I see one down there. Can you see it? Mm. You keep looking until you tell me you see it. Oh, yeah, I see it. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> I saw the rabbit before it's here. Uh, so, this set was a cool set. Um, you can see there's a, a blown down tree here, and then there's a pathway that leads right through here. And so, I set right up in the gap here, and then I made sure I blocked both sides off here so when the rabbit and the hare come down through here, they want to go down under the trees to get down to the, the cover, these blown down trees. There's three in sequence. We had the other snare, or snare over there, two of them. So basically why we didn't catch one down there is because we caught it here. How about that, buddy? So that was a good set. The snare here has got a little kink in it right there, so we're not going to use it again because it won't uh, slide very well. You can straighten these out just by uh, rubbing them on a, uh, a log, something a little thicker than that, back and forth. That'll fix your wire back up, make it smooth again, and you can reuse it. But this is too mangled up now, and it's all twisted, and that kink is, uh, it can lead to a break, so we'll just pitch this and get a new one. dropped it. Don't leave your trash in the woods. Pretty tough conditions to be snaring in and there's hardly any snow. There's only a, a little light dusting of snow and it's crusted up on the top so the hares can basically go wherever they want. They don't have to follow you know a beaten down trail as you would if you were snaring in like the middle of the winter with a heavy powder they'd be using concentrated trails. Now these hairs can go wherever they want. So this open woodlot that I'm in right now, I mean there's tracks in it, but not the kind of tracks that you could be successful snaring at. <clears throat> As I said, because the hairs can go wherever they want. You can actually see here, I'll zoom in in a second, but there's a spot where hair have been hanging out quite a bit and they've chewed up trees. So those would be a good place to set up. But what you're really looking for in these conditions, tough conditions, is blowdowns where they've been entering and leaving <coughs> the blowdown areas. You see, I'll show you right here. Oh, right here. Here's a spot where they've been gnawing on the tree here, taking the bark off because they don't have much to eat in the winter all around in here and then there's a nice spot underneath these branches where they could lay down. I'll show you that real quick. See right down in there, they can hang out in there. There's some droppings in there. But this isn't a spot where they're coming in and out in one place. It's all open in the back. It's not a <coughs> really good place. I don't know if you can see over there, there's a white tree. 
that's because the bark's been stripped so the rabbit have been hanging out here but you look around it's all really open bush so it's all open bush behind me you know there's no defined hair trails so this is not a good place so I I kept going I found some blowdowns over here that's where we're headed okay so we got another one <laughs> good job buddy so this is another blowdown set uh, in a pretty open woodlot again but what sets it apart is that blowdown area and the hair are because of the blowdown there's a funnel area where they go in and so what I've done here is taken the funnel which was fairly wide but they're going under a branch and I closed it in a little bit with some branches so that makes it so that the hair has to go through a very specific spot let's go have a look at this guy can you point out the trail that goes underneath the tree there? Um, just right there. Right there, and then it goes behind you underneath the branches. Yeah, all the way from there. Yeah. What we've done here is set up on the trail that goes underneath the trees here. There's a fairly well-defined trail. I put an overhanging branch on, and then I laid the snare in between them, and uh, drove it underneath, and it wanted to go follow the same path it's been using the whole time. It might be hard to see on camera, but the trail follows right through here. And then you can see the modifications I've done to the trail here with the branches. So when you see trees like that that are really chewed and gnawed and if you look around the base of them there's not a lot of hair activity, rabbit activity, but there's some pellets from poo from the other day. Almost seeing some tracks up there, yeah. Well what the what the hair do is they sit on the snow here and then they chew and they eat the bark because there's not a whole lot to eat. So when you start seeing areas where there's lots of them, I can see chew marks on that tree. Do you see chew marks on that tree back there, Holden? Yeah, so this is an area where the hair is spending a lot of time. So you want to start looking around for those funnels. So that's what I did yesterday. So now we're going to go check them. What were you saying about the snow? You're saying it's deep still. Yeah, it's like above the ground. Like look how far it is above. So it's still deep, it's just we're able to walk on top of it most of the time. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a hare that's in the snare and it's not dead yet, which is a problem. So I'm going to run over there and uh, we're going to finish it off. Are you coming with me or are you going to stay here? I'm coming with me. Okay. So this set here basically is a run through this section here. It was a very solid run up this way, actually up this way here, but it went by this tree here. So I wired some branches in and uh, because the hair was in here, kind of messed up the set. But the run was basically over here. So I ran the snare over and made the loop there and I drove the snare, the rabbit into the snare like so. So it was a perfect funnel up this way and uh, I have another set over there but it looks empty. I'll show you that one next. So the other snare is on the same run as the other one we just caught. It's tucked up under here. So obviously that hair that was coming through here didn't make it through because we got it back there. You can see the other one right here.
Oh, you saw a live rabbit? No way. It, ran, it was like over up there and it ran all the way across. And I thought it was a squirrel, but then I looked closer and it was white. So I thought it was white. I noticed there was a hole in the ground here and I thought, well, lay a log down and then tie a snare in front of it and maybe I'll actually catch one. But what happened was it didn't work. So I think, I think the hare are just moving it out of the way. So I'm going to leave it here for one more day and see if I actually can get something out of it. But it's interesting that there's all fresh tracks around the front here and something has been coming in and out. So that might be a unique way to to catch one actually. So we'll rig this up so that it give it another shot. See if we can't catch one out of here. So we had the snare set up for another day. We ended up with two more. Um, we ate a couple up there, so we've got still five on the go. We did a good job, huh, buddy? Yeah, yeah very successful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean these two up and we're gonna make a dinner for us. Yeah, so uh, you know, a lot of you guys have been asking me to do uh, various cleaning. You wanna do the processing, but YouTube has been cracking down on this sort of thing and they won't let me show it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an unlisted video. So if you want to see us uh, skin this animal and prepare it and turn it into meat, you'll have to switch over to the unlisted. Uh, from here on out, if you continue with this video, what you're going to see is processed animal and uh, basically just meat, any meat you can get from the grocery store. So YouTube can't censor that. So anyway, we're going to set this up. Uh, probably going to hook it up in the tree and clean it. So again, you have to switch over to the unlisted video if you want to see it. If not, you can just continue forward with this one if you're not into the graphic content. Uh, I think Holden's going to stick around and help me. Yeah? You're going to learn a little bit about processing. What I'm going to use is my, uh, I've got a Groman knife. It's a little, I think it's called the mini skinner. So uh, you can look that one up, Groman knife. I'll be using that. And uh, it's a pretty easy deal. What we're, we're going to do is cut up the legs and then basically peel it kind of like a banana. Okay? So we're going to switch the camera over here and show us how we're going to do this. And uh, if you're sticking with this one, you're going to just see prepared meat. So, family friendly. What do you think, buddy? How was this? How was the cleaning process? Did you like it? Not really. <laughs> Is it gross? Yeah. Yeah, but you're uh, you're not an adult, and you can watch it. But this is where your food comes from, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think about it? Good. It's good, but gross. Yeah. Does it make you squeamish? Not really. No. What does it make you feel? I don't know. I don't know. Does it make you feel grossed out? A little. Does it make you feel respectful? Does it make you feel thankful that an animal gave its life for us? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're meat eaters, right? So yeah. when we eat meat from the store, this is what we're eating. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good enough. I'll, I'll meet you back at home uh, in the kitchen. So I got to admit, I, as much as I love cooking outside and being outdoors, cooking indoors is so much easier. Uh, I think you don't realize maybe how much effort goes into making and maintaining a fire collecting the wood, tending the fire. It's really, it's really a reason we divided our labor. Um, 
it, to cook over a fire it is uh, something that requires constant attention and preparing meals outside without having the luxury of a countertop running water you know for sanitation reasons is a uh, it's a huge thing so i'm going to take the advantage today i'm going to cook indoors because i actually want to try to do a more professional job cooking this hair and making it nice and tender for my family uh, so they can enjoy a wild cooked meal uh, in you know properly so I've got everything set up here now I've got my hair I brined it for uh, two days overnight one day one full day and overnight the second day so a lot of the uh, blood has come out of the meat uh, that's the action of the salt pulling and dehydrating the meat and then it'll be more ready to accept their flavorings and spices uh, I've got a cast iron pot I'm gonna brine with some oil so I'll get the temperature up here now we want a fairly high temperature because we want to we want to brown it on a high heat I'll use olive oil to prevent uh, severe scalding burning <clears throat> for a brine solution I have uh, or for the, the base anyway is uh, chicken broth you can use beef broth also you can make your own I had used to have some stock made up you can make this fairly easily just by boi boiling down the bones and the leftovers you have straining out what you, what you got left and you'll have a, a good broth we have uh, rosemary basil thyme and a couple bay leaves for our spices also salt and pepper and we got root vegetables potatoes carrots and our onions so those won't go in we won't put those in right away we'll uh i want to boil in the beef or uh, the chicken broth for uh, most of the day today so that'll make sure we'll make sure I have our two rabbits covered completely and that'll make sure that the the meat will tenderize very well after we cook it in the or after we um, brown it what I'm gonna do is dry these off right now and then we're going to uh, brown them and then we'll toss them immediately in, into the pot here and then we'll throw the the uh, broth in and then we'll and our spices it should immediately start to brown so we'll have to wait a second for that to heat up you see just how nice these pieces of meat are you can't get this stuff in a store i just brine these in seasoning salt and regular table salt so nothing special there You might think this torso here is waste, but it's not. Completely usable. That'll add to our stock and it'll slowly break down over time. There's lots of meat on there. And the smell in here is fantastic. And to complete the meal, the oil, the olive oil I've been adding here, and the chicken broth, We'll add the fat that we need to balance everything out. So here's our organ meat. We'll just throw those as is. We won't brown them. Uh, you could save them for later, but we'll just toss them in right now. So there's, a, there's a heart here. There's a kidney, a bunch of kidneys here. And then the rest is liver, the red. So that'll just toss in. It'll uh, just add a little thickener to the mix. So we're going to make sure that gets covered all the way to the top. So since I have two containers, I'm going to use them. You could probably get away with just using one full container and then adding the rest with water. And throughout the day, I'll be adding water just to make sure it remains completely covered. So as you can see, it's not covered right now. So the remaining deficit I'll make up with water. I'll just simmer that on a very low heat all day long. Here's our spice mixture along with our two bay leaves. So we're going to mix that in there.
We're going to let this work its magic all day long. Tenderize that meat. If you don't tenderize it, it'll end up chewy. So the idea is to leave it on the heat as long as possible. I will leave this on heat. You know, if by the end of the day, I'm not happy with it, how tender it is. What I'll do is I'll leave it overnight and eat it tomorrow for dinner, which is probably what's going to happen anyway. Because I want that meat to be fall off the bone tender and that takes a long time for it to happen. You can't really rush it. So there we go. So the root vegetables we won't add till tomorrow when we're ready to eat. Uh, potatoes, onion, and carrot. Well, that spice already starting to smell good. And uh, we'll have this with my family. So this has been on for uh, since yesterday morning. It's uh, 2 o'clock next day from 8 a.m., 9 a.m. The day before, you can see it's pretty much like pulled pork now. You could actually just toss that onto a sandwich and have a good one. What I've done was I separated out the bones. Uh, the broth is over here. I'm just going to show you the bones. I pulled out all the bones as much as I could anyway. Since I'm feeding this to my son, I want to make sure that I could get out as much as I could, possibly could. You think like rabbits are small and they don't hold a lot of meat. Well, all the marrows come out of there. It's over here in the broth, along with the chicken, uh, the chicken broth to start. So that's really fatty. Uh, you can see the oil is collecting on the top. And uh, this is a whole lot of meat. You think two rabbits isn't a lot of meat, but when you add in the torso and you boil it up, I mean, I don't know if you can see how big that is. That's, you know, that's the size of my hand, uh, outstretched. That's a whole lot of meat, and that's only from two rabbits. And they weren't huge rabbits to begin with. So there's a lot of food there. And you see the bone and all that marrow would come out. And if you were really a carnivore and really picky about it, you could take all that meat off very easily. I mean, that's just a mouthful right there. And that's just, uh, you know, one little piece. If you sorted through there, you ate all that off there, you'd have a lot of protein. The thing is, you don't need all that protein, right? You need the fat. So nature doesn't provide you with a whole lot of fat. That's why we've added it here and we've extracted it from the bone marrow. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to recombine the uh, broth back in here. And then we're going to add our root vegetables. And those will be ready in, uh, let's say, two hours at the most, maybe one hour. And we'll be ready for uh, dinner when my family comes home. After looking at this rabbit, I decided I'm going to pull some out. I'm going to make a pulled rabbit sandwich. Can't resist, man. Stuff is like perfect for a pulled rabbit sandwich. Keep the liver in there. That should be good for a couple sandwiches at least. Look at that. It's got the perfect texture. I'm gonna add our broth back in here very carefully. We're going to put our carrots in. Probably need a few more than that. I have another bag in the fridge. We are going to throw in our onions and our potatoes. So that's it. I'm just going to add a little bit more carrots to it. And we'll let that sit. And then in a couple hours we'll eat. It smells so good. Looks good too, huh? Yeah. I want some. Salt and pepper? Crushed yeah. ground salt and pepper, sir? No. Thank you. Parmesan cheese? Ooh. Ready? Yep, ready. It's gonna be hot, I think. Oh, it's really hot. How is it? Mm, so good! Good? Yeah. So that's what you caught? Oh, yeah. The rabbit you caught, buddy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Well deserved meal? Yes? Mm -hmm. Good meal, Holden? Mm -hmm. Worth all the work? Yeah. Yeah.
All right, so that's it. Good? Delicious. Yeah, not only can I trap and fish and hunt, <laughs> but I can cook too, mm -hmm. apparently. Never. It's very good, very rich. And I set some aside to make a pulled rabbit sandwich. You like it? Are you saying you like it for the camera or you actually like it? I actually like it. Wow. You wouldn't be eating it if you didn't love it. It's true. Did you think you would like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The house smells amazing. Right? I'm not a bone. Oh, yeah. I was going to say watch out for bones. I tried to find them, but there might be some small ones in there. What'd you find? The heart. You're going to eat it? Yeah. All right. Chewy. I like it. This is the piece of meat, isn't it? Huh? Chewy piece of meat, right? Yeah, chewy piece of meat. Should save some for my mom. She'd love it. Don't tell her what it is, though. <laughs> Alright, say bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye.